Now, have you ever heard that lack of motivation, lack of feeling satisfied after a meal, or mood swings have been linked to a lack of vitamin D? So I was just as surprised as you are probably now when I heard about it. I checked the research on dopamine and vitamin D because I'm really interested in dopamine. And um, there it was, a direct link and not just one research paper that uh, linked the two. This just confirms the message that I want to convey to everyone who's grieving out there. And I also convey to a bereavement group that I visited last week. That was my very first message to them was, have your vitamin D levels checked by your GP or, you know, check them yourself with a home testing kit that you can order online for as much as probably £24 at the moment. And just make sure that you know your baseline and then start supplementing with vitamin D straight away. The current government guidelines are way too low. 400 IU is going to do nothing for your mood swings, your lack of motivation, your emotional balance going into winter. That's the one thing that I heard, you know, when I listened to all the stories of mainly brief partners in the group, that they were dreading going into winter. And the one thing that we can, you know, the one top box that we can tick before we actually go into the colder, darker winter months. Just making sure that we have the right vitamin D levels to face, you know, all these uh, roller coasters that uh, are always going to hit us at unexpected times. And especially in the winter when we also feel lonely and uh, isolated from the rest of the world because that's the time when we all go into hibernation mode, which is quite natural, but it's also tough for us grievers. Now, the other thing that you need to realize, um, and that not many people or GPs will tell you, is that um, when you get your vitamin D test results back, 50 nanomoliliter is not sufficient or normal anymore. Current research already suggests that we need a minimum of 100 nanomoliliter of vitamin D in the blood to actually make our immune system work better. And that's another thing that people were anxious about, you know, how were they going to cope with infections uh, or how, how were these infections going to make them feel, you know, like... <laughs> That, that's another thing, isn't it? Because when you don't feel well because of a viral infection, that also makes grieving worse. So it's something we can prevent. So make sure you start supplementing with vitamin D right now because we are also not making any vitamin D from now on in, until the end of April because of the angle of the sun. So in the UK, the angle of the sun is now too low for us to produce any vitamin D through the skin. So we may get some endorphins going out into the sunlight as today. It's really a very sunny day after two gloomy days, which also made me feel quite gloomy, I must admit. But um, no vitamin D through the skin. Right, so 400 IU is not going to cut it. We need higher amounts, at least 3,000, if not 5,000, or up to 10,000 international units a day, depending on our individuality and depending on your weight, on your uh, age, on how well you transport vitamin D3 into the cells. My daughter is struggling with this. How much you have been outside in the sun this summer, uh, with bare skin, without a sunscreen, and whether you, you have an autoimmune disorder or not, because people with an autoimmune disorder also need higher doses of vitamin D. So all this has to be factored in when somebody like me, a nutritional therapist, recommends vitamin D supplementation. So I'm, I'm just giving you general guidelines here, but you know, to work out what you need as an individual is a 
completely different matter and needs you know digging into your medical history and you know your daily habits and things like that to really work out what would be the right amount for you then they always talk about the risk of overdosing on vitamin d3 that's why they recommend such low amounts so in order to deal with this risk of overdosing which actually only starts when we have levels of more than 350 nanometer in our blood which is not the general rule <laughs> and not very easy to achieve either with the amounts of vitamin d3 that we are supplementing with all of us even 10,000 is not going to uh, get us there then um we can do something about this by combining vitamin D3 with K2, vitamin K2. And uh, the role of vitamin K2 is basically that it tells the calcium, that's the risk of overdosing with D3, that it could accumulate in the arteries. It tells the calcium to go into the bones. So actually K2 helps vitamin D3 make your bones stronger. Now, what's not to like about this side effect of taking vitamin D3 in higher doses? The other th thing we need to know is that we need enough magnesium to activate all this vitamin D. And because emotional stress depletes magnesium just as much as daily stresses, we probably are all low in magnesium if we haven't supplemented with it on a regular basis ever since the loss of our loved one. So... We need to start supplementing with magnesium as well if we want to get all the benefits of vitamin D3. And um, there's three things to um, consider. The form of magnesium supplement, there's a whole blog on it on my website. And uh, the parallels between common grief symptoms and magnesium deficiency. I always recommend magnesium bisglycinate and it's also easy to get on the natural dispensary website that's a website that only sells uh, high quality um, supplements from reputable supplement firms then you also need to consider whether you already have signs and symptoms of magnesium deficiency which could be insomnia not you know having very tense muscles muscle stiffness tension tingling, um, numbness in your uh, legs, um, feeling restless, restless leg syndrome is uh, an indicator, heart palpitations, um, also diarrhea because that just flushes out electrolytes and one of them is magnesium. So all these factors uh, I would consider if you came to me and uh, asked me how much you know, magnesium do I have to supplement with? And depending on that, I, I would actually start with 100 to 200 milligram of magnesium bisglycinate and take them before bed to just help you relax and have a good night's sleep, which is so vital for us grievers to really be able to cope with grief better. Um, but you need to be careful, that's the third point, to consider whether you are on any blood pressure medication or a muscle relaxant or any other medication that could amplify <laughs> the uh, effect of magnesium and make it um, yeah, because magnesium naturally for example lowers blood pressure so if you take bl blood pressure medication and a magnesium supplement at the same time you would just like probably collapse on the floor because it would just like <laughs> lower your blood pressure to such an extent that you would um, just faint, basically. So, and I don't want you to hurt yourself, right? So, um, a lot of things to consider. That's why it's always good to see a nutritional therapist like me who has studied all these things, effects, interactions with food, medication, and can really advise you and can also dig into your medical history and see you know, like what other nutrient deficiencies you may have that could make coping with grief so much worse this winter. Like, I, I will just mention it, omega-3. So just consider whether you would like to uh, optimize your 
health and well-being just before going into the winter months by uh, booking a free 30-minute call with me so that we can work out how we could uh, possibly improve your health together and uh, help you feel so much better before the darker months really start to hit you on an emotional, mental and physical level. In the meantime, I wish you um, a good week and uh, take care. And if you have any questions, you could also email me and reach out um, via social media, message me. Um, I'm, I'm always here for you if you need me. Bye bye.